Okay, yeah. So this is a little bit of a continuation on last week or last last week because class didn't happen last week. Um, but we're going to be talking a little bit about material properties for 3D printing. Um, so again, you saw 3D printers uh, last class uh, and they're pretty cool. And one of the things that uh, you guys can consider when designing your things or your models is what kind of material you want it to be made out of. Right. So in a lot of other processes, you'll be using like metals and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of 3D printing, um, there's a lot of different plastics or materials that you can use. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about some of them today. This is definitely not like the only list of materials because there's constantly more materials coming out. Um, right now is like a golden age of materials. There's so much stuff out there. Um, but yeah, this is just some of them. Uh, of course, a lot of materials will have like their strengths and weaknesses. So we're just going to be going over them today. Um, so yeah, the most common type of filament that you'll see in like desktop 3D printing is something called PLA or polylactic acid. Uh, it's actually like a quote unquote organic filament because it's uh, made of corn instead of like oil, which is kind of interesting. Um, I say in quotation marks because it needs like really specific um, like conditions for it to like degrade and recycle. So they don't, they won't like decompose if you just like leave it outside. Um, but they are technically recyclable, which is pretty cool. Um, as a plastic, it's pretty decently strong. Um, I sh should have brought some demo stuff, but like, um, I build Nerf blasters with my friends. I'm part of the BLT, if you guys don't know what that is. Um, and a lot of the blasters in the club are made of PLA, right? And we're using, you know, really large springs to propel darts. And like these blasters shoot at like 200 feet per second or higher, right? So there's a lot of power going through these, like, or there's a lot of force going through these parts and they hold up pretty well. So you'd be surprised on like how strong plastics actually are. Um, yeah, a lot of people use PLA in our club, which is pretty cool. Uh, I personally use PTG, which is a little bit different. I'll talk about it uh, later. Um, but yeah, PLA is decently strong. Um, it can be pretty rigid, so it's not the most flexible material. Um, but depending on your application, that might be a good thing. Um, the one downside to PLA is that it prints at relatively low temperatures. And for the person printing it, it's good because it makes it easy to print. Um, but in terms of mechanical strength, when things get warm, it starts to like become mushy and like degrade. So like if you leave it in a in your car on like a hot summer, your part might start to warp, right? Um, but depending on the conditions that you plan your part for uh, to be in, that may not be an issue, right? If it's going to be inside all the time, then you don't really need to worry about it melting. Um, but yeah, usually it's pretty easy to print. Um, there's a bunch of different colors out there if you like colorful things. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit brittle. Um, but it's really easy to print. So that's why a lot of people use it. It's also very cheap. So yeah. ABS is another filament. Uh, it was really popular back in the day, and then it stopped getting popular, and now it's getting more popular again. Um, but this material is something that you probably are familiar with, but you don't know. Um, a lot of the things that you use on a day-to-day -day basis that are out of plastic are usually ABS, especially like injection molded stuff. So like Lego is made out of ABS. Um, I don't know, these computers are probably injection molded ABS, depending on what you have. Um, but yeah, it's a very common material. Uh, and the reason why is um, it, oh, yeah. it melts at a really high temperature. So uh, you can leave it outside and not really have to worry about it. Um, it's pretty strong, uh, has a good impact resistance, which is what a lot of people like. Um, so, you know, lots of kid toys are made of this stuff um, and generally, it's a pretty decent material. Uh, in terms of printability, it's a little bit more difficult than something like a PLA. Um, 
because it prints at such high temperatures, when it cools down, uh, the prints tend to warp. So we were talking a little bit about like elephant's foot and warping uh, last week. Um, this is one of these filaments that is more prone to do so. Um, but you know, with an advancement in 3D printing technologies, this has become less of an issue, uh, especially with like fully enclosed 3D printers um, that help keep ta chamber temperatures high. Um, but that's a lot of technical stuff. I won't get into it. But yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty strong, and you see it a lot. Um, but it's not the most common for 3D printing. Um, I would say the second most common filament for 3D printing is PTG, which is my filament of choice at the moment. Um, I like it because of its like high strength, but also its temperature resistance. So it prints similarly to PLA, um, but it's a little bit more difficult. Um, so it's kind of in between like ABS and PTG, where it's a little bit harder to print, um, but you get a little bit more temperature resistance, right? So yeah, I like PTG, it's pretty cool. I make a lot, of, a lot of blasters out of it. I haven't really had a lot of them fail. So yeah, PTG is pretty cool. Um, TPU is pretty cool as well. Uh, I mean, all of them are pretty cool, but this one is especially notable because of its flexibility, right? So a lot of people sometimes are interested in printing like flexible things, like maybe like a phone case that you want to like absorb some of the shock, right? Um, TPU is like a pretty good material to choose for something like that because you can uh, get different flexibility out of it depending on which one you buy, right? So you can make it like more rigid or you can make it like super soft and flexible. But depending on your application, TPU is pretty cool. Um, but it's generally more difficult to print. You need to use a direct drive system for the most part. Um, but yeah, you, it'll yield pretty flexible prints, which is pretty awesome. Um, but yeah. Nylon is becoming more popular. We're starting to get into like the engineering grade like quote unquote of materials. So these generally print at really high temperatures or higher temperatures. Um, but that benefit or the benefit of doing that is usually that the material is better and stronger in most ways. So you see like nylon is very strong, um, but it's also very flexible. So it's not quite as flexible as like some TPUs, um, but it's pretty awesome. Um, you probably have stuff made of nylon. I can't really think of things off the top of my head. But yeah, nylon's cool. Uh, polycarbonate is also pretty interesting. I tried printing with it the other day. It's pretty hard to print, but it is pretty interesting. Uh, if you don't know, polycarbonate is what they use to make bulletproof glass. So you can 3D print things that are made of that stuff. It's not quite as strong as like a sheet of polycarbonate, um, but it is very strong. Um, Again, it prints at a really high nozzle temperature. Um, my printer was not having fun printing at like 300 Celsius, um, but it's possible and it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, here's like a little overlap of all these graphs of like strength and all that stuff. Um, it just goes to show that there's a bunch of materials out there and material selection is very important depending on your application, right? So if you need to make something around certain circumstances that you want your part to be in, um, you want to think about the material that it's made of. Uh, so your part will, you know, last longer, fail less, break less, or, you know, break more depending on, you know, what you want it to do. But yeah. Do you have any questions about like materials and stuff? I know I just kind of glossed over it, but yeah. All right, cool. Um, oh yeah, I forgot. There's a bunch of 3D printing stuff uh, around campus. I don't know if these links still work, um, but a lot of these clubs or organizations have 3D printers if you ever want things printed. Um, I'm not sure what all their rules are about printing stuff. Um, but sometimes they have like limits on volume. Uh, but yeah, a lot of these services are free. So if you want stuff printed, uh, you can go to them. 
Uh, and again, I have 3D printers, and you know me, so if you guys want stuff printed, I can also do that for you. I can also do that for, I think my source isn't listed up here because it's, it's, it's a bit closed, closed source, but if you guys need stuff 3D printed, like, hit me up, I can, I can give you stuff 3D printed as well. Yeah, so there's lots of printers available to you if you need it. Um, feel free to ask any of us or, yeah, these fine people over here. Um, but yeah, so that concludes like the 3D printing section. Um, we're going to now do a little bit of a segue into module five, which is the final module. So today we're going to be doing rendering. So we're going to take a model and render it to make it look nice and pretty. Uh, and then that's basically all you're going to need to do to finish your final project. So your final project, I talked about it last week. Uh, you're still doing it um, again um, please don't do the engineering fountain or like the plane or just anything we've done in class because that's just like turning in an assignment you've already done so please make it something new i like to see new things um please have more than five different design features um so if you really want you can have like five different extrudes and that counts and then you you do good um, but if you want to spend some more time on it and make something really cool, I would really appreciate that. Again, you've seen some of the final projects from, from past semesters, uh, and it's really cool for me to see that and see how well you guys, or how much you guys learn. Um, again, I would really hope that you design it with manufacturability in mind. I kind of talked about that last week, so if you weren't here, uh, please watch the video. Um, but yeah, the main thing is, don't do anything with like really steep overhangs, um, printing from like the vertical axis, if you know what I mean. Um, so 45 degrees is a good number. Um, let's see, what else? No long bridges. Again, I was telling you about that one student who asked me to print him a Golden Gate Bridge when I said no bridges. Uh, and he took that literally and did the opposite of what I wanted him to do. So please don't do that unless you de design it in a way that I can print it very easily. Um, but yeah, um, if you have any questions about how manufacturable your part is, uh, feel free to ask because I'm happy to answer that because uh, it'll make you a better designer and then it'll make my life easier when it, come, when it comes down to printing your final projects. Um, again, you will have the option to have your final projects printed. So um, in the assignment submission at the bottom, you can submit an STL or a step file of your final project. And if you select yes, then I'll make it for you. Um, and then I'll like print them in batches and then kind of like find a spot on campus and be like, hey, meet me here. Not in like a shady alleyway probably. <laughs> but like, yeah, I, I'll print it for you. Uh, and then hopefully I can get them delivered to you by the end of the semester. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, I'm just gonna jump into the rendering stuff um assignment 10 so we're going to be rendering something um so today just like pick anything that you've done in this class so far uh the lego car is not a bad option um but yeah i'm just going to boot up fusion now and we'll get started does anybody have any questions what's up okay um okay let's see So I'm just going to render the engineering fountain today. You guys can pick anything. Um, just don't pick your final project because then you're going to be doing this assignment twice. And if you do it twice, then I'm only going to give you the points for it once. So as long as it's not your final project, um, it's fine. So um, the first thing I want to do uh, when I want to render stuff is I want to add appearances. So um, throughout this class, we've been talking about adding appearances with like colors and stuff. So um, you want to do that before you render it. So it renders it in the way you want it to. So if you want it to be red, you want to add the appearance. So I'm going to close this. So you can go about doing it just like before by like pressing A, I think, and then opening uh all these materials, so I don't know. I'm gonna just 
I'm just going to paint this blue. Oh. Okay, so I have like a blue engineering fountain, right? Um, so what you want to do is you want to go from design up here on the top left to render. Uh, and you can see it has like the little icon of like a rendered image. Okay, so it'll boot you into like this kind of scene. So you see it's a little bit different from what you're used to, um, but you can see there's like a shadow now and you can kind of change the lighting and stuff like that to fit your render. Is there any, anyone stuck here? Yeah, so you go up here on the top left and it'll say design, but if you change it to render, it'll change to this. Um, you can also change the appearances here. So I already changed it. But if you click appearance on this like color wheel up here, it'll give you the option to change things, which is kind of nice. Um, but yeah, right now, your part is just kind of floating in like a gray space of nothingness. And generally, you know, you might want to have like a background or something, right? So if you click on scene settings right next to appearance, you can start to change these parameters, right? So we can like change like how bright this is. I mean, now it looks white. I'm just gonna like, I don't know, put it over here. Um, it's default set, or yeah, it's set to a solid color for background by default, um, but we can change it to environment, right? So if you wanna have like a really cool background for your final project, you can choose environment. And then we can go over here and choose different environments, right? So, I don't know. Let's choose this plaza over here. All right, you might have to download them, but well, let me choose it. Might like lag for a second. Okay, yeah. So you can see how the background changed from gray to this like cobblestone. Um, you can kind of like rotate around to kind of move your environment around the way you want it to. You can zoom in and out to, you know, make your part bigger. Um, but yeah, again, if it doesn't look the way you want it to, you can change the appearance. Uh, this is also pretty cool for when you make like mechanical things, you can set it to be like certain kinds of metals under appearance, or you can set things to be clear, like glass or something like that. So depending on what you're making, you can add all of these things into your render. Um, and then you'll have a really pretty high quality photo of whatever you're rendering, right? So like, I don't know if you like watch a lot of commercials and stuff like that. I don't know if you have like premium YouTube, but I don't. So um, a lot of the like ads you'll see of like, you know, products like phones and stuff like that, it's not always like a real object, right? Sometimes they just like render the phone on the computer and then like it'll like spin around and but that's basically what we're doing here, but like a single frame, right? It's just a very high quality photo of your design uh, that you can share with other people. Is, every, is everyone good on this? Is anyone confused about this rendering stuff? Okay, cool. So let's say I really like this angle and I kind of want to render it right now. Right, so this is just like a preview. It actually hasn't rendered yet. So if you want to render it, you can render it locally or you can render it on the cloud, right? So for your final project, I'm going to have you render on the cloud, um, but I'm just going to kind of show you how rendering works if we do it locally. So you saw at the beginning, it looked like really blurry and terrible, but then as time goes on, the uh, the render will get more and more clear, right? And it's basically using your computer's processing power to generate a really high quality image. Um, so you'll see if I like move it, 
it'll like become super blurry, right? And then once I let go, it'll start to render, right? So it'll create like one large pixel and then it'll separate those pixels into smaller pixels until it looks super shiny and nice, right? Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, um, right now I'm rendering locally, right? So my computer sounds like an airplane at an airport or something. Um, but for your final projects, we're going to do it on the cloud, right? So the cool thing about Fusion is that it's cloud-based and some of the services they offer are free for students, right? So you can render online or render things on the cloud with your student uh, license for free. Uh, and generally, like rendering a really high quality, um, you know, object takes a lot of time and a lot of processing power. So we can expedite that process to, to Autodesk and have them do it for us, which is really nice. So once you're kind of happy with everything, you can press this little teapot here and it says render. And then it'll give you a couple options, right? So there's local render and cloud render. For us, we're going to do cloud render. And I think, yeah, you can do um, like a final render, right? So again, cloud render and then final render. And then you would just press render and then it'll just do it for you. Okay, so once you press render, it'll save your document and then it'll send it out to Autodesk. And then you can see down here in the corner, it's gonna render, right? So it'll, you'll send it out to them. It'll take about like 10, 20 minutes and then they'll send it back to you. And then once you get it back, you can save it to your computer and then you'll be done. But yeah, that's basically it for rendering. Um, just like when you submit it, please just like save the image that they send you and just don't send me a screenshot of Fusion because like that's not your render. So please send me the actual render because a lot of students have sent me like screenshots of their Fusion. So yeah, once this like renders, you'll have the option to download it. So yeah, please submit me that so you know what. So I know that you know how to render. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's basically it for rendering. It's pretty simple, pretty light. And yeah, that's basically the end of this class. So thank you for staying. Um, you have all been great students. I hope you turned in your homework. Um, if you haven't turned in your homework or if I don't see it, I'm probably going to be sending emails within the next few days because uh, I don't know if um like the, the thing that's logging it is doing it wrong but there's some people that haven't submitted anything and they've been showing up for class so i don't really know what's going on um so yeah please submit your homework uh, your final projects are due a week from today so please get that in beforehand uh if you've been like sick or something or have like some circumstance that you need to talk to me about uh you can talk to me now or like send me a message later uh that's totally fine um but yeah i'm just gonna hang out uh you can ask me about final projects and stuff like that i'm happy to take a look um but if you're done feel free to leave um uh, and thank you for the past six weeks because we missed one um uh, yeah thank you so much okay let's see